Hey there, here we are. Hey there, here we are. Hi, I'm Jen Polans with Green Profit Magazine, and we're here at the first IGC show East in National Harbor, Maryland. Uh, just a little bit ago, we talked to the show owner, Jeff Morey, about the show and what we're going to see here and why he decided to put it here in National Harbor. So take a look at this. Yeah, we're a two-show company now. Uh, yeah, National Harbor, Maryland, just down the river, Potomac from uh, Washington, D.C., just opened here. Um, yeah, first year I uh, just did the opening keynote upstairs here, and I said, I don't know if I should say welcome to our eighth annual or our first year, so it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of requests to bring the IGC show to the east, um, because really, uh, while IGC show, or IGC Chicago as we now call it, the original show in Chicago at Navy Pier, has done really, really well, we really didn't have that much of attendance from the East Coast uh, independent garden centers. A lot of them came out for maybe one year, but, you know, and I made no secret of it, we really had just about 10% attendance of the folks at the show in Chicago from the East. Sure, we had the major players uh, from the East attending Chicago, but a lot of the medium-sized and smaller independents maybe came one year, but they didn't come every year. So, we still knew that there were a lot of independents on the East Coast that wanted their an independent, you know, an IGC show, as it were, on the East Coast. So we said, you know, we're going to give it a shot. Okay, now that you know why we're here, let's head on into the show floor and see what we can see. Well, it didn't take us very long to find our first uh, item to talk about here. We're at Crescent Garden, and look at these fabulous planters. There's raised bed garden, and there's also a ground planter. These are called the Newberry Collection, and they come in three colors, um, pistachio, periwinkle, which is not here, and eggplant, that's the purple one. And these, um, we were told, would make great planters indoor and out, and uh, someone has even used them for fairy gardening, which seems like a neat application. And that's not all. Over here is a new line from Crescent. They're getting into the uh, plastic wear with these acrylics, and they look like glass, but they're not. Aren't those nice? And these glasses up here, and then there's wine goblets, there's cutting boards, some really neat funky colors. They're just doing a lot to get um, into that next level of the outdoor gardening, which is sort of an extension of what they do anyway. And then over here, we have some really cool totes, these plastic totes that are great for any application but can be planted up. Um, and given as a gift. I'm here with my friend Jonathan Bardzik, and he is working with Over to Best Nurseries on a new line of edibles. And we got a special treat. Jonathan's going to be cooking for us today. So, Jonathan, tell us a little bit about what you're doing here. Awesome. This is one of my favorite quick and easy summer desserts. I've taken some peaches and blueberries, tossed them with a little bit of cardamom, one of my favorite spices. You may be familiar with it from chai tea. A uh, little bit of vinegar just to get the natural juices flowing. And now we're going to make a whipped cream with a little bit of stevia and purple ruffles basil. Stevia is going to give us wonderful sweetness and the purple ruffles basil, a little bit of spiciness. To cut these up, anytime you're dealing with a large flat leaf summer herb like basil or mint, take the leaves. Put them in a stack, place them on your cutting board, roll them the long way, just like a cigar. Take your knife, run it through, and cut it into thin ribbons. This is a classic French cut called the chiffonade. And once you have it in ribbons, if you want it finer, you just turn that pile 90 degrees and keep running your knife through. We're going to chop it down nice and finely so it distributes evenly throughout the whipped cream. All right, we're ready with that for a minute. For the stevia, I'm just going to take these sugary sweet leaves, grab my knife, again, cut them into thin ribbons, and turn that 90 degrees. And once we've got these both chopped down a little bit, then we'll chop them down together, and we'll finish whisking our cream. There we are. 
So we're ready to add these into our cream. I've got this whisked to soft peaks. Soft peaks simply means when you take your whisk out of the cream, the little tips sort of fall over. They don't quite hold their own weight yet. Now I'm going to whisk this up to stiff peaks, just about 20 seconds longer. The reason I like hand whisking cream is because that point between perfectly moist light whipped cream and dry and clumpy grainy whipped cream is so small. And you have a lot more control whisking by hand. And you can just see it starting to hold its weight in the bowl there. And I think we're ready to serve. So we'll take a plate, spoon out some fresh Jersey peaches and blueberries. Ed and Gail brought these down from Over to Vest Nurseries up in Jersey. Put on a little bit of our whipped cream. And I guess I have to take a bite, huh? Absolutely. All right. Mm. It is always delicious, quick and simple, and with fresh herbs, great and healthy right out of your garden. Enjoy. Now tell us, I want you to tell us a little bit about the line that you're working with and what all is uh, involved in that line. Great. Well, I've really had the pleasure to come together with Over to Best Nurseries, uh, a nursery that my family did business with for years, so it's, it's quality that I really believe in. They've now taken a line of herbs, they're growing them sustainably, they're certified sustainable by Veriflora, they're in a biodegradable pot. They've added great packaging into the deal, and it's a nice large size pot so that it, it's ready for the consumer to take home, use a little bit of it, and still be able to pot it up. Unlike those four inch herbs that you take home, you pick a few sprigs off, and then it's so small you plant it out and you watch it die over the next three weeks. So it's a great retail package. My involvement, and I'm really excited about it, is to create a consumer inspiration program. So we're going to have a website with custom recipes, uh, custom video, all specifically for the varieties that they're growing in the program. We'll be blogging in the spring, Facebook, Pinterest. So it's a, it's a full consumer inspiration program to get these from the garden center into the consumer's gardens and finally into the kitchen where they're going to have a lot of fun with them. Sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm here with William with Good Ideas, and William, can you tell us a little bit about your system? This is our aquaponic system. It is a full feed system from the fish in the bottom to the plants up top. Um, what it is is just like a cycle of life. Uh, the ammonia from the fish waste comes up, uh, processes, feeds your plants. Um, the plants, the water drains back towards the bottom where the fish recycle the water. Um, pretty much the only thing you have to do is feed the plants and pick the uh, or feed the fish and uh, pick the plants. Thank you. I'm here with Mark Highland of Organic Mechanics, and Mark is going to tell us about a couple of the new introductions that they have for this year. We have our root zone feeder packs, which we call Forget About It. Nice name. Love it. Because they're easy to use. You just take the pack, put it right underneath the root ball at planting time. Inside, you have mycorrhizae, biochar, a 422 fertilizer, and then azomite and oyster shell for your micros and calcium. Can you tell us a little bit about the biochar and how that works? So biochar is a yield booster in the garden. It acts as a sponge, soaks up water, fertilizer, biology, and then releases it back into the soil into the plant roots as needed, especially during times of drought. Great! And can you tell us a little bit about your pure rice hulls? Yeah, so pure rice hulls, okay. These are a perlite replacement in your soil. So they keep a mix nice and fluffy, um, very earth friendly. These are sourced, grown, and packaged in the U.S. You can also use it as a fungus gnat deterrent or as weed control in your outdoor pots. And this is the first time this has been on the market for retail, correct? Correct. It's been in the wholesale outlets for a while, but this is the first retail ready rice hulls here in the U.S. Great. Thank you. I'm here with William of Quince Creek, and he's going to tell us a little bit about this slug gun product that they have. So Slug On is a, a product that's been marketed in the UK for several years now. It's very, very popular, but this is the first year that we've had it for sale in the United States. Uh, what it is, it's pelletized waste wool. This is what's inside the bag here. So this is compressed wool that comes from the scouring industry in the UK. 
When this gets wet, after it's been sprinkled around a plant in a, in a garden or on top of a container, the pellets will swell up and they will naturally felt together and lock together to form a solid mat. So this is, this is what you'll get at the end of the story. Because wool has little hooks and, and barbs in it that allow it to felt together, it's very irritating to the foot of a slug or snail. It's also drying their foot out as they try to cross it. So it's not a, a poison, it's not a pesticide. What's going to happen is the slug will try to come up, they'll go to get in the pot and they'll encounter this or coming along the landscape and they'll encounter this and they'll just decide I don't want to cross this because it's very irritating and it's sucking the moisture out of my foot. So it, it acts as a barrier product. It's similar to say diatomaceous earth, the, how it's very irritating to the foot, but the difference with this is it's a season long product. So this is going to last for 8 to 14 months as it biodegrades until where it's, where it's really no longer effective. So you put it down one time in the springtime and you're done. You don't have to keep coming back. There's also some really nice side benefits to it. It is a great moisture mulch because the, so the water will pour right through this, but it doesn't evaporate out from underneath. It's also a, an effective weed barrier because it sets up like a rock, and so weeds can't come up from underneath, but seeds that lands on top are less likely to germinate because, it's, as I said, it's drawing the moisture out of the foot of a slug. It stays very dry on the surface, so there's not available moisture for seeds to germinate there. Okay. Then it's also a thermal barrier because wool has insulating properties. During the summertime, as the sun is beaming down on your roots, it's going to keep the roots cooler underneath, so a healthier plant. And during the shoulder seasons, it'll keep the, 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 the heat in at night. Okay. So you get a little bit of a longer extended growing season there because of that. And basically, at the end of the story, it's going to biodegrade into organic material that just adds to your soil. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. <laughs>